Chapter 2, Section 21, 61, Reflection of Judas Iscariot. As we have shown in uh, Judas Iscariot lived in the 12th century, the main contribution into his life story was made by the following characters in the 12th century. Isaac Angelios, Byzantine ruler, the wife of Andrei Bogolovsky, Christ, a sister of the Kukovivi, we have already seen that some ancient authors confuse male and female. Yakim Kukovich, Andrei Vugolovsky's first wife's brother, who was taking revenge on the prince for his brother's execution. Peter, Yakim's son, in-law, and the steward, Anbel Yashin, by birth, from the Caucasus. The phantom reflections of Judas Iscariot are the following characters from the Scaligerian textbook. 1. Proconsul Igiet Herschel or Strastokli, brother of Igiet, uh, described in the life of Apostle St. Andrew the First, called Protocletos, duplicate of Christ. 2. Sentio, also Sentius or Sentius, a Roman nobleman who allegedly plotted, organized a plot against Pope Gregory Hildebrand VII, duplicate of Christ, Typhon and Seth, ancient Egyptian characters, enemies of God Osiris, duplicates of Christ, Michael IV, the Pafla, Gonian, partial, Byzantine emperor, succeeding Roman Nos the third, Argyros, duplicate of Christ, allegedly in the 11th century. Orleg, Russian prince, partial, who killed Akkod, cold, duplicate of Christ, and Dur. Snake or serpent, who slyly bit Prince Orleg, duplicate of Christ, on the page pages of the ancient chronicles Judas Iscariot was sometimes described as cunning snake who's bitten Jesus in the Gospels. It is Judas's notorious kiss. 7. ASP, ASP, uh, which is which bit uh, ancient Egyptian queen Cleopatra in the Ar Apocryphal uh, Gospels, it is said that Judas has bitten Jesus on his right side. 8. Timon, the Misanthrop, misanthrop, described by ancient Plutarch, it is the very same Timon the Dark, described by Shakespeare in his Timon of Athens. Nine inhabitants of the city of Iskrostin, the Drevilian, or the Drevilians, Drevilians, who attacked the Russian prince Igor. Solon Tilaman, who saw everything in gloomy light. It is one of the twelve ancient Argonauts, the sly king Thr Thrus, or king of Thracians, who betrayed Polodorius, duplicate of Christ, because of his greed, described in Aeneid by Virgil. Philogo Philologos, a traitor who received a noble upbringing and education from Caesario, a freed slave of his brother Quintus, enemies of philosopher Socrates, who received 30 silver minies or 30 pieces of silver from for him, Xantippe, argumentative and bad-tempered wife of Socrates, Strapicides, greedy and cunning enemy of Socrates, described in particular by Astrophanes, Tis Afernes, former friend and Cyrus of Younger, who slandered him, described, for example, by Xenophon, Clerchus, son of Ramphius, a Spartan general mentioned by the Greek historian, Thucydides, Xenophon, Diodorus, Sand, and others betrayed Prince Cyrus the Younger. A certain money business in Zagrad, which was the reason for some Scythians' death. The Russian prince, Askold and Dur, directed, attacked uh, Zagrad in order to avenge Mard Girid and a careless defender of the city of Sardis, 
described by Herodotus. It was on their account that the inhabitants of Sardis were defeated, and King Croesus, Croesus, duplicate of Christ, was captured. Twenty, the Alcaman, Camonid, blasphemous perpetrator, those responsible for of Cylon's death, duplicate of Christ, uh, described by Thucydides and Herodotus. Alcaman, Al. Kumain, 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 Alcmaeon, the founder of Athenian family of the Alcmaenoids. Uh, it was in the 17th and 18th CC that the story of ancient Alcmaeon, Judas, became especially popular. It means that for the people of that epoch, antiquity was not at all so ancient. On the contrary, it was rather current interest. It was vigorously disputed. The fact is, antiquity is the epoch of the 14th to the 16th CC, immediately before the 17th to 18th CC. Scaligerian editing of ancient sources falls exactly on the epoch of the 17th to 18th CC. The reformers, without any reservations, were altering their ev evaluation of the events of the recent past unashamedly recoloring black into white and vice versa. It's no coincidence that it was at that time a noticeable increasing interest toward Alcameon Al Judas started in Western European society. From a sinister character and greedy traitor, there was created on paper an attractive image of a tragic, somewhat messed up, but on the whole a very good hero. It is good, true. He stabbed to death his own mother, deceived his wife, fell into incestuous relationship with his daughter. But on the whole, they say he was a wonderful person, deserving the deepest sympathy. He is exemplary. Thirty operas were composed about him, four soloists, chorus, ballet, and orchestra. The opera houses were packed with enthusiastic listeners, reformers. In the East, in particular in the Russian Orthodox Church, the persona of Judas Iscariot was always evaluated extremely negatively. Beautiful operas were not composed in his honor. He was not exhibited in an exemplary figure. There were no eulogies. His praises were not sung. 22. Messenger, informer, who betrayed the Spartan king, Pausanias, Duplicate of Christ, described, for example, by Thucydides. 23. Themistocles, a renowned ancient Athenian, described by Thucydides, uh, Plutarch, and other authors. Alcibiades, a renowned ancient Athenian of the Alcmenides family. Achia. Men de needs, see above, some authors confuse Christ with Judas Iscariot. Uh, Timaeus, a cunning friend of Andokid, described by Plutarch. Hermocrates, uh, Hermocrates, Cyrucian, uh, who betrayed commander Nicias, duplicate of Christ, described, for example, by Suclides, uh, Gly Glypetus, a uh, Spartan commander, participated in Nicias' war, stole 30 talents of money. Uh, Oroites, a Greek, uh, uh, ancient Greek satrap, uh, enemy of King Polycrates, a uh, duplicate of Christ, described by Herodotus. May Andreas, a uh, king, Polycrates of Samos, secretary, described by Herod, Her Herodot, actor, a cowardly accomplice of Spartan king, uh, Lysandro's plot, duplicate of Christ. Snake, dangerous of the Spartan king, Lysander, provoca provocator, who accused uh, Apollonius of Tyna, uh, duplicate of Christ, and his companions of offending Roman emperor by mocking his godlike voice. Persecutor, who made up denunciation of Apollonius, <clears throat> Apollon, Apollonius, who he personally spewed charges at Apollonius uh, Christ in an attempt to ruin him.
Euphrates, uh, su supposedly a friend in the beginning, but in reality a secret envier and opponent of Apollonius of Tyna. Uh, Marcias, uh, ancient Selenus, uh, he loses a contest with a god Apollo to of Christ. Partially, Marcias is also a reflection of Christ himself. Cylon, a, a wealthy nobleman who attempted to become student of Pythagoras, duplicate of Christ. Jacob, a character from Old Testament who bought his birthright from Esau. Here, Esau is Christ. But in the other episodes of the Old Testament, on the contrary, Jacob is Christ and Esau is Judah Iscariot. Valkyrie, false prophet, contemporary of the biblical prophet Isaiah. Stephanus, a traitor who offered his advice and help uh, to the conspirators in order to assassinate Ro Roman Emperor Domitian, partial duplicate of Christ. Slodinus, a conspirator who participated in assassination of Emperor Domitian. Uh, Avidius, uh, Cassius, ancient Roman general of the epic of the emperors, Aluius versus father and Aluius versus son, both are the reflections of Christ and also Aluius heart Dranius, uh, Christ, and Commodus Antonius, Christ. Pre Preflect uh, in Rome under Emperor Hadrian, who described the emperor received payment of 300 million. Uh, Augustius, uh, enemy of Orostes, lover of Queen Clitimitria, Agamemnon's wife, snake who bit Oritus, Christ, and destroyed him. Uh, Erigon, Erini, yes, the uh, main accuser of Oritus, uh, Christ, committed suicide. She hanged herself. Mordred, or Mordred, a notorious traitor who rebelled against King Arthur. Guevenevere, partial, an unfaithful wife of King Arthur, chronicler, sometimes a, a confused Christ and Judas. Snakes, who attacked uh, a young Hercules, Christ. D D E N Ira, a wife of ancient hero Hercules. It is a duplicate of the cunning wife of Andrei Bo Bogoyuvlisky, Dioscuri, ancient Greek character. Menisteus, protege of Dioscuri, ancient Greek character. Leo Comedes, an ancient Greek king who killed Cepheus, uh, Christ, tre uh, treacherously in, on the island of Cicero. Uh, Ariman, demon, embodiment of evil in the ancient Iranian mythology. Ariman and or his malicious son, Div, or Black Div, opposes Sayamak, Christ. Sohak, partial, malicious, dragon-like character, enemy of the good king, Jam. Shid, Christ, described in the Iranian epic Shah Nimha, Nima, uh, at the same time, the good part of Zohax is the reflection of Christ. Sometimes Judas was confused with Christ. Corson, Jew, who sold the martyr, illustrate Petrovsky, duplicate of Christ, allegedly the 11th century Kiev, Rosencrantz, Krentz and Gilderstein, two characters from Shakespeare's tragedy Hamlet. Le Le Lertes, son of Pontius and other Ophi Ophelia, characters from Shakespeare's tragedy Hamlet. Saturninus, partial and ancient Roman ruler duplicated in Isaiah Angelos, a relative of Titus Andronicus, whom he dethroned. Described by Shakespeare in his tragedy, Titus and Dronicus. Moon, Moore, Aaron, scheming and greedy lover of Queen Tamora, enemy of Titus and Dronicus. Described by Shakespeare in his tragedy, Titus and Dronicus. Tamora, queen of the Goths, enemy of Titus and Dronicus, duplicate of the malicious wife of Prince Andre Bogolubski. She conspired conspired in the plot against him, described in Shakespeare's tragedy, Titus Andronicus. Domitia Longina, malicious wife of Emperor Domitian. Now we are presented with a wonderful opportunity to learn many new things about the life of Andronicus Christ, Apostle Judas Iscariot, and, on the whole, about the events of the distant 12th century, the books 
by Herodotus, Tycleides, Xenophon, and other classic inform us about the events dimly reflected or not at all described in the canonical Gospels and in the New Testament literature based on the ancient authors, we are writing much more detailed life descriptions of the famous Gospel characters. Part 22, Astronomical Dating of the New Chronology. We will list the exact astronomical dates from the ancient zodiacs, which point themselves into the 12th century and are included in the framework of the new chronology along with some other data. Number one, year 1146 to 1325, Zodiac RC from the tomb of Hera, Ramesses the fourth, uh, an image on the ceiling of the burial chamber, ancient Egypt, Luxor, Valley of the Kings, allegedly antiquity. In fact, the first variant, 15 to 16 April 1146, the second variant, 10 to 17 April 1325. Number two, year 1148, second Zodiac X, S, X from the tomb of Senimut. Uh, it is depicted on the arches of the tomb, ancient Egypt, Luxor, allegedly antiquity. In fact, 17 to 18 June 1148. Three, year 1148, Zodiac RD from name Ramses the ninth. Frescoes on plaster on the arches of the burial chamber, ancient Egypt, Luxor, Valley of the Kings, allegedly antiquity. In fact, 17 June 1148. Eight, year 1151, Zodiac A.E. of Nativity, allegedly the first century depicted in the old book of Ebenezer Sibyl. In reality, his dating is as follows, 25th December 1151. So, in fact, the Zodiac is dedicated to the birth of Andronicus Christ. Year 1166, Zodiac R.G. in the Golden Horn of Gal Galihus from Copenhagen, the engraving on the horn made of gold, Denmark, allegedly the 5th century. In fact, 11 to 28 May, 1166. Number 6, year 1168, Long Dendria, Zodiac DL, depicted on a stone slab on the ceiling of a temple, base relief, ancient Egypt, Dendria, allegedly antiquity. In fact, 22 to 26 April of 1168. 7, year 1182, Zodiac of Ramses VII, Thebes, color Zodiac, a OU color fresco of the tomb ceiling, ancient Egypt, Luxor, Valley of the Kings, allegedly antiquity. In fact, 5 to 8 September of 1182. Number 8, year uh, 1185, the circular Zodiac of uh, Dendria, doctor, depicted on a uh, large stone slab, base relief, ancient Egypt, Dendria, allegedly antiquity. In fact, morning of the 20th March, 1185, it appears that this well-known Zodiac was depicted to the crucifixion of Andri Andronicus, Christ in 1185. We are being assured that it was the French who decimated the circular zodiac of Dendria in the epic of Napoleon and moved it to Paris. For example, in the book Ancient Egypt History of and Archaeology, uh, with Star Publisher Italy 2001, it says in 1820, Sebastian Louis, Louis Saliner, a member of the French Parliament, commissioned Jean Baptiste Le Lorrain, a master mason, to remove the zodiac, which he succeeded to complete in four weeks. Zodiac arrived to Paris in January 1822 and was acquired by the king for his library. However, other sources inform us rather differently. Senkovsky, O.I., a famous Russian Orientalist, uh, Arabist, uh, educated man of his time, together with his servant, without any qualms, uh, cut out a part depicting the zodiac from the ceilings, ceiling of the Dendria Temple in 1821. Most intriguing ancient Egyptian monument was put abroad a bark sailing to Russia. However, the breakdown of diplomatic relations with Port for Senkovsky to suspend the registration of the unusual baggage. Later, he's the zodiac removed by him emerged in Paris. It turns out that the French somehow intercepted the most valuable stone slab with a circular zodiac from the Russians, as we see, of the role of the Russian explorers of Egypt, uh, including the outstanding Egyptologist Glon Golinyshev was later on deliberately played down. The Germans on and the French were declared the principal Egyptologists. It is worth mentioning that on the front 
piece of the first edition of the Napoleon album depiction of Egypt, which appeared in 1809 to 1828 in France, the stone slab with the circular zodiac as a separate unit separated from the ceiling of the temple was not yet depicted. Page 38, it was added only in the second French edition of the work. Page 38, on the, in the other words, post factum. Number nine, the year 1186 or 1007, Zodiac of Mitra of uh, Gadernihim, uh, Gader Gader Stone, Base Relief, Europe, Germany, Allegedly Antiquity. In fact, the first variant, 14th to 15th October 1007, the second variant, 14th to 15th October 1186. Number 10, year 1189 or 1071 or 1308, concise zodiac, KZ, stone, base relief on the ceiling of the temple in the city of Ermont, ancient Egypt, allegedly antiquity. In fact, the first variant, 15 to 16 May 1071, the second variant, 30 to 31st May 1189, the third variant, 6 to 8th May 1308, 11. Circa 1150, the famous supernova explosion, which today is dated to year 1150. In fact, it took place a century later, circa 1150. It was this star that was reflected in the Gospels as the star of Bethlehem. Uh, number 12, year 1185. According to the church tradition, it is the solar eclipse that is connected with the crucifixion of Jesus, whereas the evangelists didn't call the duration of the fall of darkness at a point on the earth's surface acting as the three hours of darkness, but the full travel time of the moon's umbrio shadow along the earth's surface. In other words, the duration of eclipse from the beginning to the end, the evangelists had a good reason to use here the expression all over the world, the full solar eclipse of the 1st May, 1185, occurred the same year that Christ was crucified. Chapter 1, a crescent with a star became an ancient symbol of Tsar Grad. It appeared that it symbolized the moon eclip eclipsing the sun in the year of crucifixion of Andronicus, Christ, and the star of Bethlehem, blazing up circa 1150, and later on, erroneously moved to year 1051, the crescent could have depicted both the moon and the disk of the sun at the moment of a near full eclipse forming a sickle shape. Chapter 3, uh, the epic of the uh, 8th century, the uh, part 1, the mighty Trojan War as a revenge for Christ, Russian horde launches crusades to Zagrad, and within a short time, the center of the empire is transferred to Vladimir Suzdal, Russia. In 1185, uh, on the Baikos mountains near Yoros, the Emperor Andronicus Christ was crucified. The outraged provinces led by Russia horde started a war, the goal of which was vengeance and the liberation of the Holy Scepter. Sep Sepultry, uh, uh, i.e. capture of Zagrad, Jerusalem, the empire's capital. This was the Trojan War, uh, also depicted in various documents under the names of the Tarquinian War in ancient Rome, allegedly in the 6th century BC, the Gothic War in Italy, alleg allegedly in the 6th century, the Nica Revolt in Zagrad, uh, allegedly in the 6th century. The Trojan War was one of the biggest events in the history of Europe and Asia. The war was described by Homer, Herodotus, and other ancient classical authors, as well as by the medieval Dare, Dictys, uh, ancient Titus Levi, uh, describes it under the names of Tarquinian War, while Procopi Caesarian uses the name uh, War with the Goths and the uh, Nica Revolt, for example. The same war is well known under the collective name of the Crusades of the 8th century, Seizure of Zagrad in 12. Uh, 1204, and then the fall of Zagrad in 1261. The Trojan War was essentially represented in a series of bloody battles, and as such, it was described by ancient Homer, who lived in the epic of the 15th to 16th CC. Today, in place of ancient Zagrad, Troy, there survive the ruins of the Yoros Fortress on the Bosphorus, 
where the strait enters the Black Sea, 35 kilometers from Istanbul. Zagrad was uh, captured in 1204 during the Crusade, which today is erroneously called the Fourth. The city was ransacked and burned by Horde Cossacks, Crusaders, and their allies. They are some same ancient Achaeans, Greeks, described by Homer in Iliad. The Achaeans uh, were led by ancient Achilles, a.k.a. Russian horde prince uh, Svayatoslav, uh, those responsible for Andronicus' crisis crucifixion, crucifixion were captured by the Hordeans and were brutally executed. The fall of Zagrad was reflected in many chronicles as the fall of ancient Troy allegedly in the 8th century BC. Also, as the seizure of the biblical Jerusalem by the Roman army allegedly in the first century, and as the seizure of most ancient Babylonian. Modern history attaches a great importance to the Crusades. In our reconstruction, their role will grow in significance. The Trojan War in the 8th century was the first world war of the early Middle Ages. Its outcome predetermined several centuries of the course of world history. Part 2. The Crusades advanced on to Jerusalem, Zagrad, not from the West, as we are being told today, but from the East. In, we quote the Church Slavonic book, The Passion of the Christ, as it happens, according to Church tra tradition, it order, in order to capture Jerusalem, the armies marched not from the West, but from the East. In other words, the Russia horde, also the fact that the great Mongolian conquest started shortly after supported uh, supports this view. The Scaligerian history later began to claim the Crusades allegedly advanced to the Holy Land from the West. This is just another distortion of the true history of geography. Uh, in V1 and V2, there were given many examples where the ancient maps were turned upside down, i.e. north was down, drawn in the bottom and south on top. Consequently, east and west were changed places. It is quite possible that on the account of this confusion, eastern crusades turned into western ones and vice versa. Part 3. Helen of Troy and Mary, Mother of God Everyone knows the legend of Helen of Troy, wife of Menelaus, she is one of the main characters in the Trojan War. Between the three ancient goddesses, a uh, di dispute breaks out. Um, which of them is most beautiful? Each of them praises herself. This seemingly innocent dispute gives rise to the vicious Trojan War. The Chronicles tell us in the forest of Mount Ida, the forest of Judean mountains, the famous judgment of Paris took place. Paris, a son of Trojan king, judges the contest a beauty between three goddesses presenting a prize of golden apple to Aphrodite, the goddess of love, who promised to him the hand in marriage of the more, world's most beautiful woman, Helen of Sparta. A war breaks out. We uh, would like to point out that the Bible often identifies wives with different types of religions. It is possible that the legend of the judgment of Paris describes a dispute between several religions, which were nominally called women goddesses. The Trojans chose a Bacchic ancient religion from three wives' religion. They chose the religion of love, Aphrodite. So here, ancient Paris is possibly medieval Paris, Paris, per Franks, France, and cho chooses for himself the most pleasant goddess religion, Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Uh, it's worth men uh, remembering the erotic cult of the Western European Bacchic Christianity, which blossomed par particularly in France in the <clears throat> 12 to 15 CC. This adoration of the uh, Christian Aphrodite was uh, depictured in various erotic scriptures uh, and drawings which adorn Christian French temples. Something similar to the religious choice of Paris is also known to us from the history of the ancient Russia. Prince Vladimir, who baptized Russia, also listened to the representatives of several religions and chose Orthodox Christianity to be the state religion of Russia. Was this choice of Vladimir not reflect in the ancient myth of the choice of Paris? In other words, Prus, which means Prussian, um, 
Possibly it's not a coincidence that it concerns Aphrodite, uh, who unvoweled name FRDT or TRDT uh, could have originated from the Tartars or Tartar. The following famous storylines are the phantom duplicates. One, ancient Greek Paris and Helen or Venus. Number two, biblical Adam and Eve and the sly serpent. Number three, ancient Perseus and Andromeda and the sly serpent and sea monster. Four, ancient Jason and Medea and the sly serpent, sleepless dragon. Five, medieval St. George and the princess and the serpent dragon of the sea. At the same time, the Trojan War and all its duplicates, Tarquinian War, Gothic War, are described as the wars to avenge the dishonoring of a woman, but it is possible that because of a woman, even one as distinguished and beautiful as this, that such a vicious war could break out. Here quite naturally occurs a thought which puts many things in their place, as there exists a medieval tradition to nominally call different religions wives, i.e. women, then the cause of the Trojan Tarquinian Gothic War could have been a religious dispute. Whose religion or wife was better? The grounds of war was the offense to a religion or wife. There survive scriptural depictions of religion in the form of a woman and also Christian faith is represented in the female form. Our reconstruction corresponds well to the essence of the Crusades, which primarily and officially were religiously motivated actions to avenge the offense given to the religion, in other words, the avenge for insulting the mother of God for the execution of her son, Jesus Christ, then the Trojan myth acquires a natural explanation. It tells us about an important religious cross-bearing war. So the center narrative of the Trojan War is a legend about the offense given to some distinguished women, which resulted in either a war or a state coup. The Trojan versions tells us about the abduction of the Greek Helen of Sparta, the Tarquinian version of Titus Levi, about the rape of the Roman Lucretia, the Gothic version about the murder of the Gothic queen Amalasunta, uh, an equivalent story we find in the description of events allegedly of the 6th century BC told by ancient Herodotus, King Candolis, tyrant of Sardis, argues with Gyges, claiming that his wife is the most beautiful woman in the world, a conflict erupts. On account of Herodotus, famous story, we say the following, this work as the works by other ancient authors is by no means a falsification. Herodotus describes the real events of the uh, 12 to the 16th CC, he himself lived in the epoch of the 16th to 17th CC. Then the later chroniclers erroneously cast him and his writing many centuries back. However, Hereticus' writing was carefully edited according to the recently introduced Calagarian history. The same was done with the other classics. Part 4, The Trojan Horse. The famous legend about the Trojan Horse is associated with the Trojan War. For the seizure of Troy, the Greeks used something resembling a gray horse. Different chronicles describe the horse in different ways. For example, the Magi proclaim that it is impossible to seize Troy in a battle, but to conquer it only with the subterfuge. So the Greeks constructed a wooden horse of unprecedented size and hid gray warriors in its womb. The Trojans decided the dr to drag the horse into the city. Having dragged the horse in, they indulged in a joyous feast and then fell asleep. Meanwhile, the warriors hidden inside the horse quietly kept, crept out and set fire to the Trojan houses. Countless myriads of Greek forces flooded through the gates which had been opened by their comrades who were already inside Troy. Thus fell strong towered Troy. 1. For the seizure of Troy, the Greeks used a gray likeness of a horse. 2. The gigantic size of this horse likeness is mentioned. 3. Inside a few hundred soldiers could have been placed. The horse stands on enormous leg, legs. 
the wheels, and it's been wheeled. According to some chroniclers, the horse is wooden. The others think it was made of brass. Alternatively, it was made of glass, wax, etc. There is clearly an obvious variety of opinions here. Six, the horse's horse somehow entered the city. The chroniclers of the Gothic War allegedly in the 6th century made no mention of a horse. They inform us the following during the military assault of the new city, Naples, duplicate of New Rome, Sargrad. The general, Bel Belisarius, uh, used a cunning strategy indeed. Naples' thick wall were penetrated from the outside by an old, half-destroyed aqueduct, an enormous stone pipe. At some point, the aqueduct delivered water to Naples. An opening of the mouth of this water pipe was sealed off with a stone plug at the wall's level. The aqueduct was inactive for a long time. A Greek Roman's saldron of several hundred soldiers secretly infiltrates the enormous pipe from outside of the city. Having walked through it up to the wall, the Greeks unsealed the plug and made their way at night into the new city equals Naples. Early the next morning, the Greeks emerge from the aqueduct, signal to the main body of the troops outside, and open the gates from the inside. Bessarius troops burst into Naples. The massacre ensues. Half-sleeping defenders don't have enough time to even reach for their weapons. This is how Naples equals the new city falls. falls. It is possible that the half-destroyed aqueduct entering Zagrad was poetically perceived as a huge animal. The famous Trojan horse is a poetic image of an enormous construction of stone, aqueduct, water pipe, successfully used by the Greeks for the seizure of the new city. Besides, the Latin word horse, mare, is spelled equa, equae, and the word water is spelled aqua, Aqua. In other words, water and horse are spelled practically the same. That is why water pipe, aqueduct, aqueduct ch channeling uh, water, aqueductio, which uh, could have turned into horse by the later authors who could have mixed up one vowel. They could have become the birth of a bouquet of legends of an enormous likeness of a gray horse. So this gray color could have been explained by the color of an aqueduct covered in dust. Or it could have be that the question at hand concerned a portable seas tower or wheels covered with wet st skin to render it inflammable from the fire missiles launched by the besieged. Such medieval wooden towers uh, were indeed mounted on wheels and pushed towards the walls of the town under the siege. It is for a reason the horse was often depicted standing on wheels and was referred to as wooden. It was called a horse because the tower was moving. It is quite possible that such a siege construction was first used in the 13th century and con contributed to a whole host of legends about the Trojan horse. Part 5. The Skay Man's False Troy The Shilly Man's False Troy Here it is relevant to mention the ruins of a poor medieval fortification approximately 120 by 120 meters on the mound at Hiserik in Turkey, which Heinrich Schliemann mistakenly declared to be the main Rom Homeric Troy. The truth is that having lost ancient Greece in the epic of the 16th to 17th CC, the historians started to look for it all over again. Why did they start searching for Homeric Troy in that er exact area? The matter is, as it seems, that there still remains a vague memory of Troy situated somewhere near the Bosphorus, but the historians of the 18th century could no longer point New Rome out directly in Bosphorus, Zagrad, and as it was safely forgotten, the Zagrad was exactly ancient Troy. In fact, the Scaligerian history as early as the 17th century altogether forbade even thinking of Zagrad as Homeric Troy. However, there remained all kinds of medieval records which have luckily escaped destruction and persistently suggested that 
ancient Troy is situated somewhere near the Bosphorus. That is why the historians and the enthusiasts started searching for the lost Troy near Istanbul. Turkey is all wash with ruins of medieval settlements, uh, uh, military fortifications, etc. It was not difficult to pick out appropriate ruins. The ruins on the Mount of Hisarik were also considered as one of the possible candidates, both, but both historians and archaeologists alike understood very well that it was necessary to dig up some kind of proof that it was indeed Homeric Troy. This task was successfully fulfilled by H. Schliemann. He started excavation on the mound at Hisarik. Hisarik. The ruins that were unearthed show that there indeed used to be some kind of settlement. There was nothing Homeric of any kind here, of course. Such ruins in Turkey can be seen every step of the way. It is most likely that here used to be a small Ottoman fortification. Presumably, by Skilman understood that something outstanding was required to draw the public's attention towards though these scant remains. So, in May 1873, he unexpectedly finds a cache of gold, which he immediately publicly declares to be Priam's ancient treasure, purportedly the very same Homer speaks of. Hashtag, however, uh, Schliemann uh, did not specify the place, the date, and the circumstances of the discovery of Priam's treasure, bringing a particular ambiguity into his, this matter. Schliemann never presented any conclusive proof of his discovery of Homeric Troy. There are grounds of suspects that Schliemann simply ordered Hart's Parisian jewelers to fabricate ancient golden jewelry. Schliemann was an extremely wealthy man. It is quite possible that after the Schliemann secretly brought the jewels to Turkey and announced that he found them in the ruin, ruins in the mound at Hisarik, in other words, exactly where in the place where a little earlier some enthusiasts had located ancient Troy, Schliemann didn't even trouble himself with searching for Troy. Backed up by his gold, he simply substantiate a hypothesis previously put forth by uh, Koisu, Goffer, and Frank Halvert. Many skeptics as early as the 19th century didn't believe a word he was saying, but the Scaligerian historians remained satisfied over all. At last, they said, this discordant chorus, we have found legendary Troy. The historians decided to deal with Priam's treasure the following way. To affirm that it was indeed a, the treasure of Homeric Priam would have been careless. As a report, the skeptics immediately asked how, but how do they know? They had no answer. Everyone concerned with Schliemann's Troy understood that very well. On reflection, they found an elegant way. They said this without any proof. True, it is not Priam's treasure, but it is much more ancient than Schliemann himself had previously sought. But what if Schliemann didn't deceive us and in fact did find the at Hisarek, some ancient golden jewels. It still remains completely unclear why this treasure should be considered proof of ancient Troy and be situated exactly in this spot, as the golden objects found by Schliemann do not bear any letters or symbols. After some time, when the skeptics got tired of pointing out the obvious inconsistencies in the discovery of Troy, eventually an orderly scientific stage began. Serious scientific journals about Troy started to appear and were regularly published. Numerous articles and dissertations sprang up. However, nothing from Homeric Troy on the mound of Hisarik was ever found to this day, of course. Part 6. Exodus of Trojans from Troy. Z Zargrad. With the fall of Jerusalem, Troy, and downfall of the Roma Romaic Empire, the exodus fight of various groups of people from the capital began. The diagram of Romaic Femus 
are nominally shown in figure 3 in hot pursuit of the fugitive following follow the avenging horde crusader seizing the colonizing new territories they settle in different countries of Europe and Asia. This picture is well known from the Scaligerian ancient history of transmigration of peoples. The fugitives from Romia are called Trojans i.e. descendants from Troy, Zargrad, they were also confused with the Argonauts, Hossek Hordians, who, according to the ancient Greek myths, after the Trojan War, embarked on a voyage seizing and colonizing various lands. Part 7. The Establishment of Russia uh, as the center of a new empire successor of the previous one. As a result, of the decline of the old regime and the capture of Zagrad by the Horde Crusaders in 1204, Russia Horde, which used to be one of the provinces of the Romanic Empire, comes to the fore. It takes an active part in the Trojan War after the collapse of the Romia and representatives of the Romeo dynasty flee to the provinces. Some of them didn't want to accept the laws of supreme power and began their battle for world domination. According to Romaic king's beliefs, which were based on firmly rooted religious principles, the right to possess the world belong to their royal family, and not only the lands already known, but also of the years those yet to be uh, also yet to be discovered. This right they regarded as the sacred ancient legend legacy belonging to them, which under some temporary circumstances happened to be unlawfully taken away from them. Therefore, it was imperative to retrieve it. As a consequence. There appeared several states which considered themselves the legal successors of Romia. For example, Empire of Nicaea. Ancient Nicaea is the modern town of Iznik in Turkey. Other kingdoms also appeared. One of them was Vladimir Suzdal, Russia, with its capital Rostov, Veliki, Rostov the Great, and later the Yaroslav, Novgorod, which arrived in Trojan King Aeneas whose ancestors, as it happens, originally came from Russia. In the Russian chronicles, King Aeneas, reflected as the famous Varyag, Varangian, uh, Rarik, he unites isolated Russian dominions into a kingdom of a uh, kingdom, thus the first czars of Vladimir and Suzdal, uh, at first Rostov and Novogorod, no once, were the hairs of the Romaic dynasty given driven out of Zagrad in the beginning of the 13th century. They began their fight to restore the empire. Aeneas Ryrick uh, succeeded in creating a powerful municipal state which initially included encompasses encompassed the uh, Volga region and the North Black Sea region. Ample manpower, horse, and economic resources provide to be sufficient to achieve the world dominance by military means. In the 14th century, Ivan Danilo, Dani, Danilovich uh, Kalita started the Western campaign, Mongolians' Great Conquest. It is possible that the name Kalita is one of forms of a famous title of Caliph or Kali. Caliph. Part 8. Unification of Slavic and Turkic, Turk people under the Horde rule. Hereafter, turbulent political and military events took take place. The Mongol invasion of Vladimir and Suzdal, Russia begins. The success of the occupation colonization was based on the unification of numer numerous peoples in, on the territory of Russia Horde into one sole state under the military. Horde rule in the uh, 13th to early 14th CC, for more than three centuries, Russia Horde establishes its dom domination over the West, Eurasia, Africa, and eventually its complete world domination, including across ocean America. The czars of Russia Horde who were also called Khans, Kagans, uh, Grand Princes of all Russia by virtue of dynastic reasons, considered themselves the sole rightful heirs of the Romaic Empire, entitled to absolute right of succession to own possessions the entire world. From surviving odd bits of information, we can see that they regarded all the other rulers not yet subjected as unlawful, 
temporarily usurpers of various territories of the world which belong to them. The openly declared aim, the military doctrine of the Russian horde Tsar Khans, was the subjugation of the entire world by military force. In other words, the retrieval of the ancient legacy. See the diagram of the history of the main empire, the Tsargrad Empire and the Russian Horde Empire on figure 20. Uh, thus, after the fall of Troy, Tsargrad, one of the representatives of the Romaic dynasty, Antic king, Aeneas John, the disciple and comrade of Andronicus Christ, one of his dis apostles, leaves and leaves the destroyed Zargrad, Jerusalem, and heads with his companions to Russia. His royal ancestors originally came from Russia. The journey was described in particular by ancient Virgil in his famous epic poem, the Aeneid. Having arrived to Russia, King Aeneas John finds here a powerful and rich wealthy kingdom which, however, is split into principalities ruled by rival prince Khans. Being the descendants of the esteemed Russian people, Aeneas John took power in his own hands, establishes a new dynasty in Russia. He unites the Russian lands under one rule. This most important event reflected in our chronicles as invention of Varig Rurik and foundation of Veliki Novogorodo, Great Novogorodo, no, Novgorod, uh, allegedly in the 9th century. It concerned turning the city of Yaroslava on the river Volga into a capital. In the Latin literature, these events were reflected in books since the city's founding Ab Urub Candita Liberi by Titus Levi as the founding of the city of Rome and the state with the same name in the land of Latina, Latinia, Ruthenia by Romulus and Remus, the descendants of Aeneas uh, Ruric, thus famous royal Rome appeared in the inter interfluve of Oka and Volva, Volga rivers and uh, the land between the meeting point of these two rivers in the 13th century. By the end of the 13th century, a strong Tsarist reign arises based on the vast natural wealth and resources of the country and also on the strong and large army horde and backbone of which was made up of the horse cavalry, Cossacks. The word horde is probably a variation of a modified Russian word rat, uh, meaning army, the ancient and medieval word Ruthenia, which Rus, Russia, was called, meant Ratenia, Ratenia, yeah, uh, military country. Some sources call Ruthenia Latinia by way of confusing letters R and L. The name Latinia could have also originated from Russian word Ludinia, meaning populous country, the advantageous strategic location of Russia played a significant role. Thus, in Vladimir Suzdal, Russia, there emerged the metropolis of a new empire, Harris, to the Romaic Empire. We call it Russia Horde or Great equals Mongolian Empire. What did the word Mongolia mean? It probably originated from a Russian word Mungo, mean, meaning many, many people, multitudinous Tunius uh, army, and also from the Russian word mosh, meaning strength, mog, meaning can, capable or able, moglu shetov, shestov, meaning might or power, hence magog, monogo, meaning many, m and kara. Karamzin and various other authors thought the Mongolia is simply a Greek word, Miguelian, a great, but the word Miguelian itself most probably also originated from the Slavonic word Mog or Can or Mongol, many. In 4 version 1 uh, introduction, we cite the photographs of old mosaics in the Kora church in Istanbul. Here, the word Mongolia is spelled with Mugulion. 
virtually the same Megalian uh, until now East Russia is the Veliko Russia, the Veliko Russia, meaning Great Russia, or the Mongolian Empire is the Great Empire in the Russian sources. The word Mongolia or Mongolia does not occur. On the other hand, the Great Russia does come up. The foreigners would call Russia Mongolia. This name is an equivalent of Russian word Veliki, meaning great. Part 9. Russia Horde becomes a powerful empire. At the end of the 13th, the beginning of the 14th CC, the great Slavic conquest of the word world began. The historians call it the Mongolian and dated in the 13th century a hundred years later the conquest originates in russia and is carried out by the russian czars khans direct descendants of king aeneas aeneas was a relative and follower of czar andronicus christ andre bogolovsky of the gospels aeneas rurik is represented as john christ's favorite disciple whom he chose as a son to mary mother of god in his place near the cross of jesus stood his mother his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopias, the Mary Magdalene, 26, when Jesus saw his mother there and his disciple, whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that point on, the disciple took her into his home, John 25, 25 to 27, according to the biblical legend, this disciple's name was John. He will note that Aeneas and John is intrinsically the same name. Let us look at the matter of Russia Horde rise in more detail. As we said earlier, after the history victory of the Trojan War, the leaders of the Crusaders entered the struggle amongst themselves for power. Aeneas John, who didn't take part in the Crusades of 20, 1204 and fought on the loser's side, although he was a Christian, could not stay in conquered Zagrad. He fled to Vladimir Suzdal, Russia, which was most likely the motherland of Mary, Mary Mother of God, who, uh, at the wish of Christ himself, became the adopted mother of Aeneas John. Hence, the ancient legend that Aeneas' mother was the goddess of Venus, the capital of Vladimir Suzdal, Russia, at the time was Galich Kostromskoy, another Vladimir, nor Suzdal, or any other ancient Russian cities were yet to be built. Aeneas Rurik establishes a new royal dynasty and builds a new fortified capital, Yaroslav, in the Volga, described in the chronicles as Novogrod Velitsky, Veliki, Novogrod the Great. To be more precise, the city of Yaroslav was the famous Yaroslavo Slavovo Duvo. Dvorishi, Yaroslav's court, or Yarov, uh, Velitsky Novogorod. Novo, Novo, Novo Velitsky Novogorod was the name used in its broad sense uh, for the entire Vladimir Sudel, Russia. Present day Novogorod in the Vla, uh, Volkhov River is cunningly given this famous name much later. In the course of the distortion of the Russian's history at the time of the first Romanovs, it bears no relation to Veliki Novo Novgorod of the Chronicles. Rostov Velis Veliki Rostov the Great became the royal headquarters of Aeneas Rurik. This place was not chosen coincidentally. Rostov Veliki was situated in a place hard to access upstream uh, of the river Kotoros, the turn, uh, the turn into which from Volga was protected by the fortification of Yaroslav. The descendants of Yurik Aeneas correctly evaluated the advantages of Russia compared to the old imperial centers of the Mediterranean in the 13th century, they carried out the most important inform, reforms in Russia, which turned it into a world power and prepared it for the great Slavic conquest of the world in the 14th century. The reforms were as follows. 1. In the 13th to 14th CC, Ruik Aeneas and his successors introduced 
in Russia, a slash and burn ag 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 agriculture based on the cutting down slash or burning down the forests uh, followed by turning them into the archaeological lands. Such methods allows mass harvest without fertilization for the first several decades. This caused an explosive increase in the population of Russia in the 12 to 14 CC, which in its turn allowed the new state to have the advantage in military confrontations. To clarify, it is well known that in Russia prior to the 15th century, the original and predominant agricultural system was slash and burn. Two, break new ground, plot, parse, and incinerate the forests was largely customary in Russia as early as the 14th and 15th CC. Uh, article, our, our agriculture, such a method could not last indefinitely as it was based on the vast deforestation and irretrievable exploitation of the benign layers of soil accumulated over centuries. When the forest began to run out and the soil in its place started to run dry, this, me this method ceased to be effective. We know that the first agricultural tools in Russia were designed particularly for the slash and burn farming on the site of the burned out forest. Russia, such tools were soha, Russian pol plow, and barona, harrow, made of chopped chipping of the tree trunk with branches 35 to 50 centimeters long. Two kinds of tool adapted to the stony fields and adapted to the northern regions of Russia uh, to the region of slash and burning farmings, article, agricultural equipment, and machinery. It was for a reason that in ancient Russia, there were so-called oglishenye, the proponents of the slash and burn farming who burnt the forest down and plowed, plowed up the burnt site, uh, Agnisha, which emerged in their place. Article, Agnishene. Only in the 15th century, approximately two years after the burning of the forest started, they began to think for the first time about the necessity of letting the land rest. The Three field system was almost non existent before the 15th century. The first allusion to it occurred in one judicial scroll of 1503. It became significantly widespread by the middle of the 16th century, article agriculture. Thus, the necessity of the multiple field system when a part of the land was left fo uh, follow appeared in Russia. Uh, only in the 15th century and became ubiquitous in the 16th century. The initial stage, which consisted a total deforestation and conversion into the plow land, had to be swift. And while huge harvests were gathered, the population grew fast, spread out all, in all directions, and consumed more and more forests. It is known that the spread speed of such processes is exponential, alike to an explosion. That is why it cannot be sustained. The time spent on burning the forests down in central Russia and then turning them from the solid wild forest into an agricultural country with vast for fields and meadows amounted to approximately 200 years, tentatively speaking, from the mid of the 3rd to the 13th to the mid of the 15th CC. The ability of gathering large harvests from vast spaces without caring to fertilize or water the fields. In contrast to many southern regions in central Russia, the fields are watered by the rain with no human intervention, which gave the new state a huge advantage over the enemies. It was possible to raise uh, a strong and healthy population, all of which made it possible to create huge army, horde, and what's more important, allow them to constantly nourish it. Such a slow start at the beginning of the horde Russia took around 100 years from the beginning to the end of the 13th century. Number two, the Russian horde was an army of a completely new fashion. Unlike all the previous armies, horde was predominantly horse cavalry. Most likely the horses were tamed by humans and for the first time were used by the military in the 12th century. As early as uh, in time of Romaic Empire, originally the horse cavalry didn't exist. Only nobles and wealthy people could afford a war horse. A horse was considered to be precise, uh, precious commodity. The great majority of the ordinary soldiers were foot soldiers. In order to supply an ordinary soldier with a horse, it was necessary to have many herds of horse, horses. For 
that you would need vast steps where these uh, herds could graze. Uh, there are no steps like that in Mediterranean. In Russia, they do exist. It was the southern Russia, Russian steep steps uh, between the Volga and the Don River, which served as a basis for the creation of an enormous army of a completely new kind. Horse horde in the 13th to 14th CC, where each warrior Cossack would have not one, but several horses, which would allow the horde to accomplish long distance marches over the endless vast lands of Eurasia. Moreover, it allowed them to move quite fast. As the horses uh, needed pasture, the army was nomadic out of necessity. It would cons constantly move from place to place. Before the creation of the horse horde in the ancient Romaic Empire, the whole mode of travel was predominantly aquatic. That is why the expansion of Romia on the 10th to 12th CC was carried out mainly by water. In the first place, the, uh, place the shores of the Mediterranean Black Seas were dominated. Later, the banks of the big rivers running into deep seas, rivers Danube, Dnieper and Don from the Don River, they would haul over to Volga River and end up in Russia and also in Caspian Sea and Iran. Thus, the ancient Mediterranean com community and the Romaic culture appeared. At uh, its heart there, the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, all the capitals were here in the Mediterranean, at first in the lower reaches of the Nile in African Egypt, later the capital moved closer to the Black Sea to the Bosphorus to Zargrad. Without the sufficient means of transportation on lands, the ancient Romaic uh, Empire could not develop the inland territories of Eurasia, the vast spaces of, con of the continent distant from the waterways remain inaccessible and unexplored only with the event of the Russian horde in the 13th to 14th CC, they began to be gradually explored. Unlike the ancient Romia, the Russian horde empire of the 14th to 16th CC became mainly a land state with ground communications. Naturally, the aquatic means of transportation were also used, but overall the empire was expanding along the land route, routes which it created itself. In the 13th to 14 CC, the Russia for the time unprecedented production of iron and iron weaponry was up and running. Iron ore can be used, can also be found in South, but not exclusively in uh, Central Russia. However, smelting of iron requires a lot of fuel. In those times, only firewood and charcoal were used for fuel. Black coal and oil, petroleum, were not yet to be discovered. That is why Central Russia had an important advantage over the South. There were forests and consequently firewood and charcoal in greater quantity than the Mediterranean, let alone that exactly at the time in Russia, the total burning out of the of forests was taking place. Pleasure, please see above this, uh, as a matter of fact, was providing an unlimited amount of charcoal, which most likely allowed Russia whore to quickly take the lead in the field of iron smelting and the manufacture of the iron weapons. The Russian Tsar Khans were able to equip the horde with iron weapons, which in the Mediterranean were quite expensive and unaffordable to many. This also gave a huge advantage to the Russian horde over its enemies. Number four, Rurik Aeneas and his successors, the Russian Tsar Khan, skillfully used the geographical location of Vladimir Suzdal, Russia, i.e. in between the rivers of Oka and Volga, as an enormous natural fortification from the north and west and east it was parted off by the swamps and harsh woods. Besides, from the west, wide Oka River served as a natural barrier. There was one other significant factor. At that time, there was a big difference between the route from Russia to the Mediterranean and the way back from the Mediterranean to Russia. They were not completely the same. The route from Vladimir to Sudel, Russia, to the Mediterranean ran alongside the Volga River. Then they went by traction, carried or pulled the boats over ground into the Don River and then along the Don River to the Azov, the Black Seas. This was the ancient and the only direct route from Russia to Zagrad and back. This is the route well known from, from the historical sources. There was also a different route to Vladimir Suzdal's Russia up the river 
Dnieper and the east by land, but prior to the Russian forest clearing, it was not suitable for troops to march through, as they couldn't move through the virgin forests. The Russian Tsar Khans quickly understood the great advantage of the geographical position of the Vladimir Suzdal Russia in any military confrontation with the South. Please see the map. If a Russian army set out on the march of the South, it would move along the Volga and down rivers downstream. By doing so, the warriors could conserve their energy and increase their speed of movement. Having reached their destination quickly, the soldiers would enter the battle in and in case of victory and destruction of the enemy, they could comfortably in the leisurely manner turn, return back home, now moving upstream quite the opposite from the enemy's armies. Uh, who, by, if marching from the Mediterranean toward Russia from the very start, would have to move upstream along the Don and Volga rivers against the current, which dramatically decreased their speed and allowed the Russian troops time to prepare. It is not surprising that from the chronicles we know of multiple crusades by the Russian princes in Tsargrad, many of which were successful, but we don't know any opposite examples, a military campaign from Zagrad to Russia, which achieved its aim. Number five, Rurik Aeneas and his successors established in Russia in order to aim at world domination. The state was divided into two parts, civil and military. A social class of Cossacks was created who were picked for military services, service in their childhood. They were never to return home. Those Cossacks who lived to a certain age would either retire to uh, the monastery or if they managed to serve until achieving a high enough rank, would leave the horde to become civil dukes. Prior to the 17th century, the Cossacks didn't engage in farming. It was strictly forbidden to them. They were fed by the rural peasants' population who were paying taxes. The peasants also provided manpower to resupply the horde. The children of the peasants were drafted into the army as Cossacks, the Cossacks themselves at that time neither married nor raised children. They knew only how to fight. They did not do anything else, but they fought very well. On, only eventually, or after the collapse of the great Russian Empire of the 17th century, the Cossacks were left to their own devices and were forced to begin to independently cultivate farmland, set up a household, marry and raise children. Only then the Cossack states started to emerge and the Cossacks started turning into a self-reproducing independent social class distinct from the present ones. But all this would take place in the 17th century, much later than the events we are describing here. In the later chronicles written in Western Europe after the great Slavic conquest, the creation by Rurik Aeneas and his descendants in the 13th to 14th CC, the old Russian state, Russian horde, was called the creation of the ancient Rome by the descendants of Aeneas, Romulus, and Remus, and was incorrectly dated to many hundreds of years BC. In the Middle Ages, the epic poem by Virgil, and in particular the Aeneid, were considered as Christian writing. It is all correct. Virgil most likely was creating his work in epic of the 16th, 17th CC the des and described the events which took place after the crucifixion of Christ in 1185, However, the commentators prefer to talk about Virgil's Christianity as Christian allegorical interpretation, purporting that Virgil himself was current, certainly not a Christian, but he is interpreted in that way. It is clear why they keep repeating it. The reason is that the Scaligerian chronology erroneously referred Virgil and his work to the first century BC, i.e. allegedly before the birth of Christ, he resulted in the artificial contradiction, which has been tirelessly researched by several generations of historians since the 18th century. Everyone in, is familiar with the legend of the foundation of Rome by the descendants of Aeneas, Romulus, and Remus. As we now understand, this means the rise of Russia horde in the end of the 13th the beginning of the 14th CC, and the emergence of the Mongolian Empire, the famous she-wolf, who suckled uh, Romulus and Remus is a partial and symbolic reflection of the Russian river Volga, which raised the brothers Ivan and Gregory Danilovici, the founder of the great empire at the 
time, the image of the Rom Roman she-wolf is also partial reflection of the Mary, Mother of God, who raised baby Jesus, into whom on the icons is often depicted baby John the Baptist, two brothers who found Rome and Gregory and Ivan Denilovich, Lovici, Gregory Denilovich is also known as Genghis Khan and Ivan Denilovich and Batu Khan. Genghis Khan is also known as Gregory the Vic Victory Bearer, the Conqueror, and the Rurik. It turns out that the Gregory and Ivan, the Romulus and Remus, were the descendants of the royal dynasty which emerged on the shores of Olga River after the fall of Troy and who moved the metropolis of the empire to Russia horde. We would like to repeat that Aeneas' journey to Russia was not accidental. His royal ancestors originated in Russia, Dardan, D uh, Horde, Don, then Janus, or Aesius, or Jesus Christ, and Asarikus, i.e. Russian.